Has this ever happened to you? Uh, uh, syphilis! Uh. Well, no need to fear. Color diagnostic glasses are here. Wear our yellow ones to treat syphilis. Are you insane? I got half of a dead mule in my basement. You wanna see? Take our blue glasses! Now I'm a successful businessman. $2,000 worth of awesome things, please. Are you depressed? Try our pink glasses. Life is good. Yeah! Go to Colored Lenses Company to treat all of your many disorders today. If you have some weird condition, go to Colored Lens Co., but they probably won't do anything, so you may want to go to hospital first. Channel 4 News with five-time Emmy Award winning anchor, Ron Burgundy. Chankine Sports. Rick Tamlin Weather. And your reporter in the field, Brian Fantana. It's Channel 4 News at 6 o'clock. Hello, I'm Ron Burgundy, and this is the Channel 4 News team, along with Brick Tamlin Hi. and Ryan Fantana. We're missing Champ Kind because he might be dead. But breaking news, we are in a civil war. Yeah. But I, the anchor man I am, I'm lucky enough to get an interview with the Confederate General Nathaniel Bedford Forrest. Over to you, past Ron. I'm sitting here live with General Nathaniel Bedford Forrest. He's a general in the Confederate Army, which is um, fighting against the Union Army in the Civil War, correct? Correct, sir. Um, so it's my understanding, sir, that um, you've had in combat a total of 29 horses shot out from under you. Yes. Now, what is that? What does it feel like having 29 horses shot out from under you? It's like having 29 horses shot out from under you. <laughs> You'll never feel safe on a horse again. Wow. At, at one point, did you ever think, why do I keep riding horse? Like, at a horse 11, did you just say, why am I doing this? I mean... You just kept going to 29. Why? To be honest, I started doing that at horse, too. Mm. At, at one point, did you ever form a plan just to have your men stand in front of the horse so one could make it out? Well, yes, but then the people get shot. Then my horse falls out. Mm. Now, I'm, I'm curious here, but do you think it might just be the plan of the Union Army just to shoot down your horses? It's part of a Union Army shock and awe division. Shock and awe division? I'm shocked and awed by hearing this right now. I, I also called this interview with you because I hear you are, um, you know, Nathaniel Bedford Forrest. It's word around that you, you're starting a new gentleman's club. Yes. It will be for uh, brighter men. Brighter? Um, what, do you, what do you mean by brighter? Like brighter in the soul? Yes. Oh, oh nice. What, where, where are these meetings going to take place? Abandoned warehouses like this. Who are the uh, members who are allowed to join this special gentleman's club? Those who are bright. Could you define bright for me? I'm sorry, I'm lost. Meh. Meh. You're getting this live, folks. Right here, Channel 4 News team. Wow. What a great interviewer I really am, huh? You are amazing, Ron. Pretty good, Ron. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, um, Brian, what, what are you planning on doing later today to work on this civil war? Later I'll be going into the field to, uh, see a new, new wooden ship built in this, our civil war era. You hear that, folks? Diversity. It's a new, new wooden ship used now in the civil war era. Can't wait to see it. Mm. Now, Can't... Brick, what about you? What are you planning on doing? Um, well... Br Brick? Brick, are you... Are... Are you okay? Can we get somebody over here? <laughs> let, it, let it up. It's okay. It's okay. Let it up. I think there's only one way I can let it up. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Just... <laughs> that's fine, bro. Let it happen. Excuse me for a minute. I need my tunes. Should I go get Audrey? <laughs> get her. We, we need Audrey. <sighs> Are you okay? A dream's a dream of no more war. What is he doing? A time of peace. 
<laughs> no more dying. Is, is he making this up right now? I dreamed a dream of times before. This is pretty good if he's making it up. A time of life. And when life was giving, then the Confederates came at night with their cannons as loud as thunder. Every time he's got to do this. As they tore the Union apart. <laughs> so it's okay. Um, As their bullets tear you to shreds, <laughs> I was drafted one year ago. I'm scared now. I joined the army with much pride. Why does he do this all Then I saw what carnage the war did show! Where, where'd he go? I had no choice but to run and hide. Rick? Oh god, he's dead. And ah. then I met Ron Burgundy. Oh, you got him. I dreamed that he could end the war. Again, I'll try and shut it over. But there are dreams that cannot be. Oh, and there are wars we cannot weather. <laughs> I had a dream oh, the war God. would end. But I forgot that we would defend our country's liberty. So he's, long. He's, he's so long. true, though. He's now, so right. now, the South has killed. I can't help it. The dream. <laughs> I dream. You done, Brick? That was beautiful. <laughs> Brick Chapman. I am gonna you beautiful man, you. I don't I care am. how low your IQ is. That was beautiful. I'm going to go uh, report from the field. You you go do that. We're, we're going to have a Stay moment. Stay strong. Yeah. We're going to have a moment now. Now... Now, what you folks are seeing this live, we may be immortal, and we may be better looking oh than goodness. all of you. Ron, Ron, what? I'm getting a call. Oh, oh, it's Champ. He's alive? He has a report. He wants us to cut to him right now. It's about battle strategies. Oh, oh we're cutting straight now to Champ Kine. <laughs> Champ Kine, we're going to you now. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Hi, I'm Champ Kind, reporting to you from, uh, some brothel, I think. Well, all I have on my person is not my hat, a gun covered in blood, and this thing. So, now, in sports, I guess we got a war going on. In the Eastern Theater, the American Division, we got some Confederates beating back our Union boys at the second Battle of Bull Run. It was a close game for a while, until the CSA brought in their center linebacker, Stoney Jackson. Uh, this caused the Union to score a thousand or so more deaths. Uh, Jackson scored a field goal, disabling the Union's artillery. On the Union's team, John Pope, quarterback, was facing heavy defense. The game was long with a final score of 8,300 to 10,000. Confederates won. That's a pretty tough score. You only gotta, you only gotta step it up. This places the Confederates now in first place for the championship. 
Now, the follow-up to this game was at the Antietam City Bank Stadium. On one side, we had George McClellan, general manager and team captain. Uh, leading at CSA in this game was Robbie E. Lee, ball boy turned captain. Uh, the game started off fine, equal scores for each side, uh, but the game soon came to a head when the two teams met at the Antietam Bridge. Uh, there were a lot of shots in each side, and soon the stadium river was running with blood. Uh, both sides were taking heavy casualties. The game ended in a tie, USA 12,401, CSA 10,346. When asked for comment, Mr. Lincoln remarked to his general manager, We should have beat those Confederates. Mr. McClellan needs to whip this team into shape. We have a lot of work to do. Does, does someone have something burning? Oh, it must just be me. Hmm, better. Sorry for you folks at home. See, that's the Eastern Theater, uh, but in the Western Theater, we got some more stuff going on. We have some conflict in the game at Shiloh. In Tennessee, our guy Ulysses S. Grant faced off against PGT Beauregard going up the Pen Tennessee River. Uh, pinch hitter William T. Sherman scored a couple points, pushing the score up higher. Although the CSA won the game, they couldn't block the Union coming into Tennessee territory. Will you shut up? Well, that has my prints on it now. That should be a lesson to you kids. Don't not wear gloves. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted by that weird machine-y thingy that tells time, I was saying that William T. Sherman scored a couple points, and really, let me let you know a little secret. I think Sherman, he's probably gonna be the MVP of this whole conflict thing. He's got a great lineup on his defense. He really knows how to lead a team, and really, Consecutively, he's done fantastic. So, that is my MVP choice of the year. Whammy! Now, although the CSA did win the game at Shiloh, they couldn't block the Union from coming into Tennessee territory. With a final score of 13,407 to 1069, 10,699, apologize, the CSA is on top of the division for now. We'll have to keep tuned and see what happens in the long run. Let's put it this way, there's going to be a lot more deaths, America. This week, we decided to spice up the show a little bit and give me a new segment. I like to call it, Interview with Dying People. Whammy! Um, yes, hello, may I speak to a Union soldier there, please? Oh, oh God! Okay, you'll do. Um, and exactly how long have you been fighting in this war? Oh, God! I don't know. Oh. <sighs> Sir, please, I'm trying to do a segment for the news. Please act professional. Okay, answer my questions. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! <laughs> Sir, if you can't be mature about this, I don't know if I want to talk to you. Oh, God, God, God. Can you get some help, please? Okay, sir, just why exactly are you fighting for this war? <gasps> Well, actually, there are a few reasons. See, I don't like the South. They think they're all better than us. And also, well, we do need their cotton, and they're just leaving over an um, extremely immoral issue of slavery. It's not right. They shouldn't have it, you know? Well, sir, it sounds like you're- ah! Oh, God! There's a hole in my chest! I was going to say, sir, that you're fighting for exactly the right reasons, and you're a true American. No, oh, thank you so much! Oh, God. Sir? Sir? <laughs> I, I Hello? <coughs> Sir? He's indisposed at the moment. Yeah. Champ kind. Well, thank you, champ. Now over to Brian Fantana in the field. Brian, how are you? Ron, I'm here. Fantastic. Best story of the news right there, Brian. Well, with one anchor missing and another one probably dead, we will leave you with that departing message tonight. So, from the two remaining... From the one remaining anchor, I'm Ron Burgundy. You stay classy, the Union.